Welcome to Electron Online. The mystery deepens. Now they're realizing they're looking at objects really far away, moving at very high velocities, very high redshift, very high recessional velocities away from us. They're looking at objects that are so far away it's almost unimaginable. Remember, about 2.1 billion light years for 3C273 and about 4.6 billion light years for 3C48. And they're moving at enormous velocities. And then we realized that the signals we were picking up with those radio telescopes are actually quite strong. And there's no way that we could imagine that those could be coming from objects that are so far away. And this is why. Notice that the intensity of any signal is equal to the power of the signal divided by the area over which it spreads. Now, of course, radio signals that are generated somewhere in space, they spread out in all directions. It's kind of like a beach ball or a balloon that gets blown up and the signal goes is divided over wider and a wider and a wider area. So the area we're talking about is the area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. And so we take the power of the source divided by 4 pi r squared and gives us the intensity. But notice, since the intensity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared and the distances are enormous, the intensity drops down to almost zero relative to the initial signal if the distance becomes really, really long. And in this case, they're enormously far away. So in order for the intensity to be as powerful as it is, the power of the initial sources, those quasars, must be phenomenal. So we began to calculate, and sure enough, when we compare the luminosity of 3C273, all the energy we're getting from that object, that quasar, 3C273, and we compare it to the luminosity of the sun, notice 10 to the 40th watt compared to the output of the sun, which is about 4 times 10 to the 26th watt, that's a ratio of 25 trillion to 1. With other words, that object, that quasar, was putting out as much energy as 25 trillion suns. Now the sun is a bit bigger than the average star in the Milky Way galaxy, so when we converted that to the Milky Way galaxy, that object was putting out as much energy as a thousand Milky Way galaxies. And our Milky Way galaxy is not a small galaxy, it's a large galaxy. Wow! An object that could put out a thousand times the energy of the Milky Way galaxy. So, as we continued to study, we began to realize that the typical range for quasars was anywhere from 10 to the 38 to 10 to the 42nd watts. But in other words, there were quasars that even put more energy out. Yes, there were quasars that put out less, but there were quasars that put out more. So, anywhere from about 10 times the energy of the Milky Way galaxy to potentially tens of thousands of times the energy of our Milky Way galaxy. Wow, what were those things? What could, put, what could put out so much energy? And where was it coming from? What are quasars? So you can see that the mystery was becoming very deep. And that wasn't it yet. Then something else came along that we discovered that kind of finally gave us an idea of what we thought we might be looking at. So stay tuned and we'll explain that one to you. So what are those two galaxies there? Those two galaxies? Well, the first one is 3C273. So that's the quasar for which we first discovered the speed and what it actually was. And this was 3C48, the first object that we saw as a blue-like star. But that, they're inside the galaxy, right? Oh, no, no. They're galaxies that are billions of light years away. Yeah, but they're in a galaxy. Oh, so the quasars themselves, you're right. The quasars themselves are inside the galaxies towards the center. But of course, at this time, they didn't know that yet. So they're slowly unraveling the secret of what a quasar actually was. If it's giving out that much more energy than, this, than, the, um, than the galaxy, would it be brighter than the galaxy? So they put out so much energy that they outshine the galaxy themselves. As a matter of fact, later on we found that we could barely see the galaxy because the brightness of the quasar itself inside the galaxy. So the, gal the quasars were far outshining the galaxies. We could barely even see the galaxies because the quasars were so bright. It's like looking at a headlight and then trying to find a small little candle next to the headlight of a car when it's bright light. Yep, that was indeed the case.